Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the TGG Garage. Today, we're rebuilding a 3.2 liter VR6. That's right, we've got a machine block, painted silver, we've got the ultrasonic cleaner roaring away. And then we've got a cylinder head with new parts on the toolbox. Tell it's a cylinder head because of the way it is. No fucking way. Look at that. We have the right amount of valves in this head. Mr. Donnie, yeah. what is your plans? That. Unfortunately, no, the top of the cylinder deck is not rust protected, but that's okay. We'll we'll fix that right up. Scotch Brite pad yeah. will do. <laughs> Insert. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Put that pin in. Oh yeah. You missed the spot, Daniel. Alright, you missed a lot of spots. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta clean that. <laughs> it looks a little uh my old out. All right. all right guys so we got everything laid out on the bench all our new parts our head gasket the timing chains and components were actually new when we got this engine so we're going to be reinstalling those we've got new exhaust gaskets we've got um, some dealer ordered bolts here so we've got main bolts brand new flywheel bolt we've got two thrust bearings upper timing cover coolant jacket o-ring We've also got brand new Molle piston rings and we've got King's uh, rod bearings and main bearings. So these are just standard size. Our new cylinder head freshly decked and uh, put back together. We've got the Wiseco taper tool. Definitely a must when you do this job. We've got a 320 grit hone, flex hone. This is the 89 millimeter. So this should work well for our 84 millimeter bore. New uh, coolant components here. The typical crack pipe and thermostat housing with a new thermostat inside. Front main, rear main seals, head bolts obviously. And then over on this table, we've got all of our components that we're gonna be cleaning up in the ultrasonic. So we've got um, our rods and pistons. We've got our front cover. We've got uh, our intermediate sprocket, uh, oil pump shaft, and then our VVT housing and our cam gears as well. So let's get ultrasonically clean. Let's see. Stuff in there? I don't know. Probably, what, five minutes? If that, seriously. They look like shit before. Here's a good before. They're good. Oh, Ooh. yeah. And they're clean. What's going on, Jordan? Well, we're gonna friggin' dingleberry, dongleberry the block with our special cylinder tool. Right, give it, Jordan. All right, so the trick is you wanna go at a slow, pace but you want to stroke it like relatively okay, okay. relatively quickly okay so oh yeah oh yeah it it's important to make a uh, noise when you pull out freshly stroked cylinder and now we're gonna wipe it wipe up your mess <laughs> a little too aggressive? Too, too aggressive what do you think we can keep going i can still see the original uh, oil mark do. Dr. Han. There we go. Is it flushed? Yeah, pretty good. All right, next one. Should throw like a rolling bee across it. That's so heavy. Mr. George? Keep going, keep going. Damn. So yeah, we've gone ahead. We put the uh, the main bolts in, we did lightly oil them. Initial torque, 60 Newton meters, and now we're doing 90 degree turns on all of them. I think it's just hurt. Yeah. All right, so now we're putting some pistons in this thing. We've got our Wiseco taper piston tool installer, and it's machined at a 15 degree angle to match the, uh, the angle of the VR, courtesy of Tectonics Tuning. Then we're gonna Stick it down in there. And so we've got our uh, our ring gaps in our desired locations. Hmm. Not happy with it? Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's being a little bit of a pain for some reason. Beauty. Oh yeah, there we go. 
first. And yeah, we gotta put that, uh, attach that to the crank, but looking good. All right, Jordan, what are we doing? We're putting rod caps back in. We're just doing this right now, kind of sideways. Easy to put the piston in the bore and then be able to get down here. We are gonna plastic gauge this once we've got them all on, like individually. Um, but right now I just want to get them connected to the crankshaft. Jordan, what are we doing? So now we're gonna uh, detrimentally ruin the block by drilling into the coolant passages for the uh, engine bracket. Not quite into the coolant passages. <laughs> yeah, so we've got our uh, M10 by 1.5. This is actually how big the mount bolt is. It's quite shallow. You only get like five threads of engagement. We have to sand the casting the block down so that our engine mount sits flush against the block. So right now, if I put it against this machine part, you can see we've got, we've actually got like a gap there. How much easier does having this mount make it? Yeah, it's it's good if, if you don't have one of these mounts handy and it's it's in the car that's being swapped into, it'd be good to get one of these, you know, for mock-up because we don't have to actually have the drivetrain removed. All right. We went and got some 80 grit. We're sanding all the dowels flat to each other. We've already gone ahead and drilled some holes to make the uh, removal of the material a little easier. All right, so here's how we drilled the holes. So I did have another motor on hand that I could reference. Gauged how deep these holes were, it's about that. And then we actually took some spacers that would be able to hug the drill bit that we were using. So like this, we put them over to help us kind of level out our drill. So you can probably buy uh, something like this online, like these spacers to help you drill the hole completely center. That's one of the most crucial steps to this whole thing. Otherwise your bolts are gonna be sideways on your mount, which you don't want. You want them to be flat so it doesn't, you know, loosen itself up or whatever. Jordan, what's going on? So now we're tapping it. Man, the spacer that we have, it's just like the perfect size. So we can just put it flush against our machined, machined surface. And then uh, we go to town with the tap. So we could not have done a better job, I think. All right, so the bottom end is torqued up. We got our guide on. We're gonna go ahead and seal our lower timing cover. Oh yeah. Good old 2824 valve. Need some love, needs cleaned up in here. We're gonna take care of that and put this 3-2 engine in here that is uh, partially built. All right, little status update. So we've got the front end off and we're working on undoing the wiring harness and whatnot. What's going on, Jordan? We are removing the engine. The 2 8 lump in here is coming right out. Alright, hit the hoist. For some reason. For no reason. That was whack. Alright. Let me do one last check. Brake booster, heater core lines. Oh, yeah, clutch line. That's all that is. Yep. All the way. Stop. Stop shit. A little more. All the way. Goodbye, 28. That was a night. So much room for activities. Now that the engine's out, we're pulling the transmission off and we've got to basically strip down this 2.8 to steal all of the accessory bracket, the accessories, the oil filter housing, the whole wiring harness, um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much where we're at right now. As far as 2.8 and 3.2 goes, the, the port sizes on the manifolds are exactly identical. So this is a side-by-side -side with the 2.8 and the 3.2.
and you can see that even on the 2-8, uh, you've actually got an overlap um, of exhaust gas here showing that the port on the cylinder head is bigger than the actual casting on the manifold. And then you move over to the 3-2, and you actually look at that carbon, and that imprint is actually larger. So there's power to be had on the 3-2s a little bit if you were to to carve that out to match the size of the cylinder head. But yeah, if we go ahead and take our calipers, that's the 3.2 and that's the 2.8. They're exactly the same height and I've measured the width and the width is exactly the same as well. All right, so we've got the engine harness installed, a lot of our accessories, clutch and flywheel, our oil pan and oil pump got swapped over. We're looking good. Come on, Jordan. All right, so we're gonna crank this uh, torque pulley this what we're gonna torque this crank pulley <laughs> and uh, so the way I do it right now since we have the transmission on I've gone ahead and done this little trick here where I thread an M12 bolt in to one of the holes and lock it with a shouldered M12 bolt on the starter tee the flywheel and then we come over here so 120 Newton meters initial torque and then we have to do angle is I mark the angle, 12 o'clock, uh, right there. And we have to do a 90 degree turn, but instead of doing that manually, like most sane people. I don't know if I like this idea. I guess this is a, considered a double no-no because most people replace their crankshaft bolt. 90. Yeah. yeah not going nowhere we're gonna reattach the transmission now yep tilt back. okay tilt it more tilt it down let her rip keep going down slow yeah it's good There be the mighty 3-2 ascending into the heavens. So it's a good idea to pop the VVT housing off the 3-2 and basically dremel out the oil screen that usually sits here. Now, if you take good care of your engine, you'll probably never have an issue with that oil screen. However, if it gets a lot of sludge and debris in it, eventually uh, it'll push the screen through into the, the phaser solenoids and you'll have uh, mad problems. This O-ring is shot and you can't get this O-ring separate from the VVT housing from Volkswagen. So what I like to do is I, I keep the O-ring but then I silicone around it on the machined surface. All right, so I've got these cam gears back off because we had Mark V ones on and our software is flash for the Mark IV ones. Now, um, you can actually run the Mark V ones if you have a good tuner who can flash the Mark IV ECU to utilize the solenoid and the different VVT map. However, we're just gonna throw on um, the Mark IV ones and make it simple because that's just the software that we already have. All right, so new ECU is in. We've done up the fuel rail here. Now the Torig, uh, the nipple is on this side. So this is actually our feed line running across the rail. And then our return is here. We gotta put the fuel pressure regulator in. We've got the fuel lines routed to the tank. Now I've got to put the manifold on, already test fit it so it clears. Do our uh, vacuum box system up. All right, we're going for the first start. No coolant, but uh, yeah, we just want to see if it'll fire right up. Try keying on, gonna see if there's no fuel leak. Okay. Ready? Yep. Oh, still a big vacuum leak somewhere. One more time. Oh. Here's your back it. Oh, 
fucking bath in the uh, the throttle box. Oh yeah. You got pretty nice, huh? Yeah. So the 3-2 Bora is finished. Now we've got two 3-2 swapped Boras. Um, we've still got some stuff to do and we have some broken tubes to fix, but we're gonna do all that. So this is a 83 millimeter silicone throttle body to math. Right now it doesn't reach the stock gearbox and there really isn't one on the market that does. So we're gonna run that with clamps and a cone filter. Just gotta pick that up. Um, this is the cracked PCB valve hose we got to get a silicone for here right now it's plugged off so the engine runs this is our this is how our radium fuel pressure regulator setup turned out turned out good had some problems welding it um, had some pinhole fuel leaks but that's been sorted out and it's not leaking anymore so that's good guys so thanks for watching our 3-2 rebuild swamp project see you in the next one